oh hello there it's been a while i'm back and today we're looking at this 3d printer and for those in the know this is a voron but what you might not know it's a voron with a difference and that difference is it's not a kit and i made up a lot of the parts myself so today we're going to have a look at the custom parts and why i made them it's not a guide if you want to see a guide on making vorons there are loads of awesome channels like Nero 3D. How's everyone doing today? Modbot. What's going on, everybody? Mandic, really? Hello, 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 folks. And many others. They actually have proper kits. And I advise that you get a proper kit because you'll get all the parts in there and they generally work really well and it will save you loads of money and time. I'm an idiot and now I like to make things hard for myself. So this is not a kit. It's self-sourced using lots of parts that I took from old printers. So let's have a look at what I've made. So like I said, this is a Voron and you will recognize it as being a Voron. Its closest match is a Voron 1.8. So that does go back a bit. The reason that I've chosen this model is because of the parts that I had. So this all started last year and I brought a Kaiwu Tycoon Max. It was recommended to me because it was on sale at £100. That was a £600 printer on sale for £100. They were clearly trying to get rid of some stock. At the time of making this video, they're on sale again, but I'm not sure if it's in the UK. But anyway, I wouldn't recommend buying one. I had lots of trouble with it and I just couldn't fix the trouble. As you can see here, the retraction just wouldn't tune in and that was down to the way that the extruder works with the PTFE lined hot end. Not the best setup. I tried to get around the old clunky firmware by installing Clipper and that kind of helped but it still wasn't good enough. I eventually upgraded the hot end with an orbiter and a dragonfly and that did help. With Clipper I was able to get pressure advance working and we could get some decent prints as long as you printed slowly. Then I got the Bamboo Lab P1P and AMS and the Tycoon was in the way. So I put it on the shelf and it sat there for quite a while. Recently, I was looking for another printer project and I knew that he had some decent parts in there. So as we'll see in this picture, we've got stepper motors, we've got dual lead screw, linear rail that was on the X and the bed. The bed is actually quite good and it's staying flat while printing. It's probably the best part of the whole printer. We also got the power supply and a few other bits and bobs. That wasn't enough so I scavenged some parts from the Rook, we took out the MKS skipper and the screen, more bearings and a few bits of bobs and I even scrapped some parts out of another printer that I haven't shown using really old parts and it wasn't particularly good but it was lots of fun. I had my basic idea and I was looking at my options for frames. I kind of knew that I wanted to do a Voron style but the problem with the Vorons they're made for MGN9 linear rails. So these rails are MGN9 and they will not fit into a V-slot. They sit in and they have a tendency to, to be crooked because they're actually sitting inside the V. That meant we need to order a Voron specific frame or we order Misumi style. Basically they do not have the V so that the smaller rail can sit on top flat. So I looked around and I found a cheap one on AliExpress. Nobody had really ordered it. It was for a Trident 300 and it was £90-ish with shipping. So I took the risk and it was okay. Eventually it got here. They pre-cut, pre-tapped, blind holes and the quality was okay. Unfortunately, as we'll see, it does have one issue. And when you're trying to put in a T-nut, it just will not go in. You really have to force it to go in. And also the ones, the rolling ones with the bearing, they did not go in at all. So unlike most of the Voron kits, we don't have to preload the nuts. On this frame, you really did have to preload the nuts or push the, the nut in and make a bit of a mess of the frame. That was my only negative on the frame. Everything else was okay. I had my frame idea, I had a collection of parts, I knew I wanted Voron based, and I did a basic CAD drawing, shared on Twitter, and Rain Motorsport pointed out with those parts, you should be able to make a Voron 1.8 and share the picture. And that was it. I knew what I wanted to do and I started to work on a more in-depth CAD design. A lot of issues with printers like this is banding on the Z. I was very concerned about that. So I really went over the top on the way that I made the bed. So if we have a closer look, 
these red parts are aluminium that I painted and I cut on my CNC. So there's the bottom brace, the middle part for the bed, and then this top brace. That means that everything is machine cut and as long as I keep the top and bottom parallel, everything will fit properly with no binding and it was a really good idea. The rods and these flange bearings actually came out of the Kaiwu and I just brought two more of those. Same with the Z lead screw, they're also out of the Kaiwu. If we look on the back, these are also motors that came out of the Kaiwu and I machined my own AB motor mounts. So again, four millimeter aluminium, but I never got around to painting those. That was really fun to do that and uh, I enjoyed doing, making those up. If we look up top, this is the part that is basically recognizable as being a Voron. The gantry and the belt tensioners and the AB motor mounts are from the Voron 1.8. I wasn't too happy about putting the BL touch that I had on the old one, so we've upgraded this with tap. So the nozzle touches the bed and the toilet moves up, that activates the end stop, and that means that the actual nozzle is the point of reference so you don't need a nozzle offset i'm very happy with how that's working out the red and the black parts are printed in polymaker asa and i printed those on my tiny m that you might have seen the video that i made in the past that's now set up to be my high temperature printer and it's working great if we look down here we've got what look like basic voron skirts and i printed those in black and red pet g and the black part are solid at the background. I just like that touch. So this is a screen for the MKS Skipper TFT, uh, black and red pet G again. And I just did the Voron logo just to make it a little bit more interesting. Down at the bottom, I printed out this Voron logo. These are all like parts. It was a huge file. I was having loads of trouble getting it working. And Dennis on Twitter helped me do that. Thank you so much, Dennis. And I watched the video by Mudbot where he got his Seaboard Trident and you got access to the control boards from the top. So you don't have to go underneath. Normally the Voron parts are on the bottom or on the back. So these are printed out in sections on the P1P. Three on this side uh, I welded together and then on this side we can take them off. You see I've got a, a little fan on there. If we take that one off. We have access to the control board. This is the MKS Skipper that I took out of the rook, and that's great, it's so much nicer. Just take the panels off and we've got access to those. Everything is on DIN rails, so it's easy to move around. I really like that detail, it just adds something to the printer. So like I said, this was very much self-sourced, and I was just doing a bit at a time, uh, ordering parts when I could, and um, it was nowhere near the cost of an actual Voron, so we're talking like, well over a thousand pounds. It was, it would have been half that, but obviously it's not as good technically as an actual Voron Trident or a 2.4. Thankfully it prints really well and I'm very happy with how it's turned out. So let's get this turned on and I'll quickly go through some of the troubles that I've had with some of the older parts. Basically just fans being noisy, but also cheap fans making funny noises due to high accelerations. This is the screen that works with the MKS skipper and I have a big problem with this top corner which is going back a menu. So if I try and press it with my finger, it's generally pressing extruder. If we go to actions and then I go back, you see it's, it's gone to move. So I have to use something else to do that. That's quite annoying. You have to press the screen quite hard to do things as well. What I'm doing at the minute is we're heating up the bed I've got a macro called start warm up. I'm just going to click that. And what we want to do is heat up the nozzle because we've got tap. We don't want any filament blocking the nozzle. We want a clean nozzle so that we get a good Z first layer. So the bed heats up to 60. The nozzle is around about 170 so that we don't get any oozing. Oozy nine millimeter. So it just drops the bed as normal. We've got sensorless homing on this. Goes to the center and lifts the bed up. And then we'll see the tap in action. I really like the tap. So the nozzle is going to touch the bed and the tool head is going to move up. That is our Z limit. 
so you just see it there and now because we've got independent lead screws on the left and right we're going to tram the gantry make sure that it's parallel to the bed then it moves into the middle and waits to print something before we get printing I want to quickly just talk about these old fans this is a GDS time uh, blower fan and I was getting a really bad rattle so as we'll see in this clip when it was doing one part of the infill at very high acceleration it was making an awful noise and it turns out that it's just these fans are just rubbish as it was printing the high acceleration would make that move and it would make that awful rattle sound now top and bottom we have the recommended fans from 123D in the UK who sell Voron kits so I've got the recommended fans for the Voron kits and it's made a big difference so let's get a print going and we can have a look so I started the print going the bed's already up to temperature so it's just waiting for the nozzle I would really like to add some kind of wiper to the bed or just to the side of it so that it can do an actual nozzle wipe so I'm wondering if we can get the ones from the new bamboo A1 they look quite good or the Lulzbutt ones so this is my pre-print setup it does the home on the Z moves to this front corner the nozzle's now heated up to the final temperature and I've made it so that the nozzle goes like a diagonal path down so if there's any bit of filament sticking out it tends to fold it over and I found that it's working quite well and I'm getting good reliable prints I have run a bed probe and that's stored in memory and so far I'm getting very good results from this bed that came off the Kairi Max it's just working very well I'm getting excellent first layer results one of my test prints and that looks absolutely perfect I'll show that I'll show a close-up on the screen so we're almost there we're at 220 so as you'll see it does that move down you can see that there's like a wispy bit that was folded over as it moved And these motors off the Kairi were quite noisy. So that looks like a very nice first layer. So yep, very happy with the new fans. This is just the stock Voron profile in Orca Slicer and it's working fine. The Dragonfly has got a 0.5 CHT nozzle. So um, just above average flow rates not had any issues with that at all again no rattle from the fans so I have been doing some reasonable prints this is one of Todd's stands this is Todd from Retro Frog and it was printed on this printer you might be able to make out some ringing and I haven't run the compensation for that yet uh, I've got to connect up the uh, ADXL, the accelerometer, to get rid of the rigging. But there's no banding. I'm really happy that there is no Z banding at all. And the print quality looks very good apart from that ringing. So there we have my Voron 1.8. I've called this one Voltron, mainly because it's made up of so many other printers. Would I recommend Voron printers to you? Yes, 100%. I've compared print quality between this and the P1P and in some ways this is actually better because the P1P is just a little bit too fast so you do have to dial that down I've had excellent results from this I'm very happy and I'm so glad that I built it it's a really fun project designing both the bed motion and making the parts on the CNC and I'm already working on another conversion with a big 400 by 400 printer so that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this look at my custom Voron 1.8 and I'll see you on the next one. Bye.